As the existential danger of a second Trump presidency looms, there remains one incredibly effective defense against the president's extremist agenda, electing Democratic governors. Take Minnesota, for instance. With a two-vote Democratic majority in the Minnesota House, a one-vote advantage in the state Senate and a Democratic governor, the state enacted an avalanche of progressive legislation last session, enshrining abortion access, banning LGBTQ conversion therapy, expanding education funding, restoring voting rights to ex-felons, expanding Medicaid, legalizing recreational marijuana, and enacting a red flag gun law, just to name a few. And that's a lot. And in 2024, our next guest is hoping to take the lessons of the Minnesota miracle, as some have called it, nationwide, with 11 gubernatorial races on the ballot. Joining me now, Tim Waltz, Democratic governor of the great state of Minnesota and the new chair of the Democratic Governors Association. Governor Waltz, great to see you again. Thanks for coming back to The Sunday Show. Great to see you, Jonathan. Thanks for having me. So in a recent interview with Politico, your advice to your Democratic colleagues was simple. Be bold. Tell me more about that strategy. Yeah, look, these are these policies that we're enacting are super popular. People care deeply about reproductive rights. They care to make sure their children have food in school. Um, they, the Republicans, talk about freedom all the time. That means freedom to be in your bedroom, freedom to be in your exam room. We're talking about freedom to not be shot at school. And I think when we're bold, when we move policies that improve people's lives, um, good politics follows good policy. And so uh, many of these things we've been able to do, especially economically, is because of the president's agenda. The first time in decades we've seen Infrastructure Act, we see bold movements on climate change and green energy. All of those things are popular amongst people. And when you move on them, uh, it inspires people. So uh, my job now is is to take that message out there. Each governor will have their own message in their own state. You say Andy Bashir do it in, in Deep Red Kentucky, and people People forget we lost by three points in Mississippi um, with Brandon Presley down there. We're going to play everywhere. And again, if you live in a state with a Democratic governor, your life's improved. You know, 11 state governorships are up next year uh, with Democrats holding three states and Republicans holding the other eight. What's your game plan for holding on to those seats while also making gains on the map? Yeah, we have no incumbents. We're losing great governors like Roy Cooper to term limits, uh, John Carney up in Delaware, and then Jay Inslee did did three terms in Washington State, and we're going to hold those. But look, we're going to run at New Hampshire. Uh, I think our message works everywhere. Montana, uh, John Tester is going to be on the ballot as a senator. He's super popular. And I think my role is, you know, I'm a school teacher. I had no political background in this. A group like the DGA is out there to make sure we're going to see these candidates rise up. We're going to see them spontaneously want to be good servants leaders. And I think we we play. We've got to be realistic. Some of these states are a real challenge, but DGA is there to help. And, and I'm a firm believer there's Democrats in all these places. The red-blue map doesn't show you. There's Democrats in North Dakota. I was up there a month or so ago speaking to their Democratic Party. Um, it wasn't that long ago. Their entire slate was Democrats. So we'll keep working everywhere. Uh, and North Dakota is where my, <clears throat> excuse me, where, where my husband is from and where my in-laws are, and they're watching. Hi, Jan. Um, yeah. Governor, North Carolina's uh, lieutenant governor and current frontrunner in the Republican primary for governor, Mark Robinson, is proudly embracing election denialism, telling a crowd in 2021 that Biden, quote, stole the election. As yeah. uh, Donald Trump's attacks on democracy uh, trickle down to states nationwide, how should Democrats fight back against those claims? Yeah, first of all, governors will run on those bread and butter issues that impact people's lives, just like you saw in Kentucky. We'll be able to do that. But look, there's going to be a choice next year, and it's not going to be anything about Joe Biden's age. It's going to be about protection of the democracy. It's going to be about do we want a dictatorship? Do we want to keep pre existing conditions, protections in the ACA? And the good thing there in North Carolina, Mr. Robinson's not ever going to be the governor. And the people of North Carolina saw having Roy Cooper there to fight back against an extremist agenda of trying to deny reproductive rights, demonizing little children for simply who they are, um, will be there to push back. And I think governors need to understand their state's needs. They need to message those very basic issues. But the broader context of this, um, elect a Democratic governor, and you'll start to see the things that improve lives. We saw we see that in, in Minnesota. I got to get you on one more thing, Governor, before I let you go. It's been a little over a week since California Governor Gavin Newsom debated Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, a guy who apparently is running for president. Um, yes. 
but is it important? Was it an asset um, for, um, I'm sorry, is it a strategy? Is it the right strategy to take the fight directly to Republicans um, in the way that Governor Newsom did on that stage, but has been doing for more than a year now? Yeah, I think anytime you can highlight how strange these people are, it's a good thing. They're they're out of the mainstream of where people are at. I saw Mike Johnson. Look, I don't need him giving me a sermon. I need him to live one. Talk about serving the poor. Talk about serving those less fortunate. Uh, and and in this case, to watch Gavin, uh, you know, destroy who was apparently their savior in in the Republican Party was great. And what Gavin said on there, I think, was the most pertinent thing was, is I'll take Joe Biden at a hundred over any of these guys at whatever age they're at because he's delivering. As a proud Carleton alum, it is my pleasure and honor <laughs> to have you on, on the show. Minnesota Governor Tim Waltz, thank you very much for coming to the Sunday show. Always a pleasure to be with you, Jonathan.